Today we're going to uncover one of the greatest keys to your success. We'll also hear of a woman who was completely healed from cancer and how their business was completely transformed. Yes, and we're also going to take time to pray with you. It's all happening right here, so don't go anywhere. What is partnership? A group of two or more individuals in relationship cooperating to advance their mutual interests, each with their own rights and responsibilities. We're celebrating our Team Revolution partners today on Fixing the Money Thing. Hello and welcome to the program. I'm Gary and this is my wife, Drenda. We are so glad you joined us today because today is a special day. And what? Why, Dren? Tell us why because it's a special Because today day. we're celebrating the wonderful, amazing, yes. brave men and women who've taken this journey with us over uh, the yes. years, months, weeks, and even days to help this message of the kingdom go across the world. And of course, we're talking about our partners, you. Awesome. That's right. We would not be doing what we're doing, Dren, without you. And of course, the kingdom message is going across the world and we get emails from all over every day of lives that have been transformed by the kingdom, which reminds us our lives were transformed by the, I mean, transformed yes. nine years, severely in debt, panic attacks, antidepressants, IRS liens, judgments, canceled credit cards, shame and stress and hopelessness. Yeah, it was a hard time. And we were trying to figure out what are we doing wrong? We love God, but why is it that we don't see the promises in his word coming to pass in our life. And as God began to teach us about his kingdom and we saw our lives transformed, then we wanted to tell everyone well, about the kingdom. You said the word kingdom. At that time, I didn't, we didn't have the revelation of kingdom. Uh, the only time I heard of kingdom was in the Lord's Prayer. And that's the only time I heard of it. But we were believers. We loved God. Uh, we loved the anointing. We were baptized in the Holy Spirit, loved church. We went to Bible uh, school. Had Bible we school, went to Old have Roberts a degree, uh, yes. an Old Testament degree, but could not get heaven to manifest in our life. I could see what it said. I mean, I could see what the Bible said, and I could agree with what the Bible said, but I couldn't get it to manifest what it said in our lives, especially at that time in the financial area. I mean, right. we were we were sinking. Right. Slowly, but it right. was right. We never had enough money to put uh, fill the car up with gas. No. We were living in an old 1800s farmhouse, which we were renting for three hundred dollars a oh, month. Yeah. Was uh, but a it was just a struggle. Then, Every day us. was like, how will we, how will we pay our bills this month? Right, how will right. we do? Stress. Part of that is that we bought the world system of debt yep. and had bought into that, but just trying to survive. But then also we didn't understand the kingdom, God's didn't. system. And we didn't even know there was two no, systems. No, no, we, we didn't have that clear. In fact, it was not until we just reached bottom that God spoke to me one day and said, hey, you're in this mess because you never learned how my kingdom operates. And I of remember. course that, yeah, well, I went straight to you. And of course I repented to God. I repented to you and said, okay, God just told us the answer, but I don't know what it means. We're, we've got to figure this out. What, right. what does it mean by kingdom? How does his kingdom work? And so we began <laughs> to study it and began to learn that a kingdom is not a mob of people, but it's a government. And a government operates by laws. The authority of the king travels down through every citizen through a system of govern, government and laws. And when I discovered that when, that, when I got that bit of insight, I realized I could learn the laws. Mm. And so I began to read the Bible different, began to apply the principles. And of course, then we got out of debt two and a half years, built our dream house, began paying cash for everything, um, and since started businesses. Uh, and we were like, the, everyone has to hear yeah, this. We everyone were so, has I to mean, know. We were like kids in a candy store. I yeah. mean, it's like, I mean, we had to pinch ourselves every day. It's like, wow, did you see that happen? Did you see this happen? It started when we had this revelation that God spoke to me about the kingdom. He used something very simple to catch my attention. We prayed, God, show us what you mean. And of course, you know, I love to hunt, been hunting our whole life. And uh, at that time, we needed the, the venison, you know, but I, wouldn't, I wasn't getting any venison. I, I was going out, but not getting any deer. And uh, amazingly, God said to me that uh, shortly after he spoke that, why don't you let me help you with your deer hunting? I thought that was kind of strange. It's like, <laughs> how are you going to help me with my deer hunting? And he said this, take a check, write, you know, sew it, write on the check 
what it's for, come into agreement with you for my buck, that you're my dear, and then send it to a ministry that I tell you to send it to. And uh, we did that, and of course, within 40 minutes, uh, very strange circumstances, we don't have time to discover. You went out hunting. <laughs> went out, and in 40 minutes had my buck, like just simple, like it's supposed to happen, like clockwork. And of course, that's been, what, 30 five years ago or so, and every year it happens like that. I've watched it. <laughs> so the kingdom, I, and then I realized if it worked for the deer, of course, we did that several years. You got you gained confidence in that because mm -hmm. your first time you think, well, that was weird. But then we gained confidence. But we began to apply what God was showing us to finances. Yes. I love how God takes something that's important to you, and you can have a victory in that area, mm -hmm. and then you can begin to see. It's like the lights come on. And you see how that can impact your finances too, right. how, how the kingdom can impact every area. So God started with something that you enjoy, something that right. you weren't having success at, because it seems like when you're not having success, yeah. it's kind of across the board, right? Yeah. It's in one area, it's in another area, it's in every area. And that when God showed you this area to use his uh, word and to apply his word to, it was personal, it was intimate, it spoke to your heart. Then we realized, wait a minute, I remember you saying, if this will work for hunting, why wouldn't it work yeah. for every area of finances? So we can dive into the principles because we see the story, but you can see stories in the Bible as well. And you're, you should be asking questions as we discuss this because the issue is, okay, how did that happen? Okay, so I read a story in the Bible, how, what laws brought that to pass? What laws brought the deer, you know, in different stories? So I want to point out one of the key principles, as we said at the beginning of the show, one of the key principles in what actually I was doing, which I didn't know what I was doing when God said, take a check, and so it was I was operating under the law of partnership. Now, we find this same principle, Drenda, in Luke chapter 5. You remember P Peter, James, and John, our fishermen, and they went out fishing in Luke, uh, Luke chapter 5 uh, all night and caught nothing, the Bible says. Mm. And so Jesus walking along the shore sees the boat sitting there and the fishermen are washing their nets. They're done. I mean, they're finished for the, for the day, right? They fish at night. And so he asked to borrow one of the boats. It was Peter's boat. And so Peter let him have the boat. They went out. Jesus preached from it. But then before they came back in, Jesus said, put out into the deep water and let down the nets for a catch. Well, Peter said, Master, we've worked hard all night and haven't caught anything, but because you say so, mm. we'll let down the nets. That's an important phrase, because you say so. When they'd done so, they caught such a large number of fish, their nets began to break. Wow. So they signaled their partners, catch this phrase, they signaled their partners, now where are they at? They're on the beat, on, on the, the shore. On the shore. That's the Bible. Both boats were on the shore, it says, and they were washing their nets. So Peter is signaling the other boat that's on the shore and his partners to come out. So they signaled their partners in the other boat to come out and help them, and they came and filled both boats so full they began to sink. Their nets are about breaking. Their boats are now sinking. But here is the question that has to be answered. If you're talking about legal jurisdiction and the kingdom operating, I understand Peter is the one that said, because you said so. Mm -hmm. His boat filled up. Why did James and John's boat fill up? How much faith did they exercise in their boat filling up? Just enough to obey. That's all the faith it took, just to obey and go obey out who? there. To obey his command, come out. Peter. Yeah, Peter. That was just out. Peter. I mean, yes. Peter said, come and help me. Right. They did nothing as far as faith is concerned. Right. They just, oh my God, you know, come out and just get these fit. You know, they filled both boats and both boats filled identically the same, full to the sinking point. So the question is, okay, how much faith? We agreed they didn't exercise faith at all. So we have to ask a question, why did their boat fill up the same as Peter's who exercised faith? They were business partners. Exactly, the text <laughs> says, they were partners in this business. When Peter gave Jesus the boat, it was the business's boat, the partnership's boat, which they had two boats. The entire business came under the jurisdiction of the kingdom of God, Jesus and his assignment. The anointing on that assignment came on both boats, not just Peter's. And so they filled exactly the same. And so when we sowed that day for that deer, 
to the ministry that God showed us, we are now coming into partnership with that other ministry, and the anointing on that ministry now becomes our anointing, yes. and that agreement produces based not just on our faith, but on their faith as well. Yes, and that's the way partnership is. That is. When we're preaching and teaching the kingdom of God, we're carrying this kingdom message out. Not only does it have impact uh, on those that are hearing, but those that engage it as our partners and get involved with it, they're actually carrying out God's business assignment, taking care of Father's business, and then Father, God begins to take care of theirs. He begins to take care that's of yours. Good. That's it. So when you're engaged in what God is doing, then you are inviting his presence, his anointing, and actually his calling and anointing on you to teach this kingdom message and me to the ends of the earth. That brings that same anointing, that same blessing mm -hmm. on your business, on your life, on your finances, because we become partners, but we're more importantly becoming partners with God who That's put right. this ministry in, enacted it and put it out and anointed and called us to teach the kingdom to the ends of the earth. Yeah. You become a part of that when you partner. When you think of partnership in business, you both share in the profits. Mm -hmm. And so when you partner with God's assignment, again, you become partners. I think partnership from a religious mindset is I need money and I want you to help me get done what I need to get done. That's not partnership. That's just giving. Partnership's different in the sense that the partners that are coming together understand the principle of partnership. And so we're going to join in partnership. The anointing that God has placed, for instance, on our ministry, our assignment, as you said, becomes theirs. But to truly partner, we want the partners to understand what's actually happening. I always say it this way, how's my business doing? You know, I'd say to a business owner that partners, they would say, how's my ministry going? They could mm -hmm. say, because we're partners, I'd say, how's, how's my business doing, right? Yes. Because we're sharing together in this partnership. And if we have that mindset of what it really is, that's going to change everything. Yes. It's prophets, priests, and kings unto our God mm -hmm. all coming together around the same assignment and fulfilling that. And the grace that's on our life yes. becomes your grace yeah. is when we are not only receiving, but now we're able to change lives through the power of the kingdom of God by sharing it. And that's the grace that comes on you. Yeah. And again, like I said, we have a great story coming up. I'm so excited to share it with you. And isn't it really about stories? Isn't it really about seeing the kingdom actually do what it says in the Bible? It's about changed lives. It's about changed lives. Transformation. Exactly. It's about transformed lives. Absolutely. That's what God is looking for to touch people. That's what he cares about. Finances really are part of a function of the earth, but God is looking to touch lives and hearts. And you do that. We do that as we teach the kingdom of God and God's love for people. And we have so many amazing stories of how this kingdom has changed and transformed lives. One of those stories is Johnny and Ruth Miller. And we want to share that story with you right now. And when we come back, Gary and I would like to pray with you because God wants to cause impact in your life from His kingdom just as well. I had gone to the doctor and found out that I had um, a polyp that needed removed and ended up being a big deal. And they said, um, you have stage four cancer and here's what we recommend. And so one of it was doing chemo for six months and then um, see what happens after that. While I was in that process is when I would be laying on the couch resting. After chemo treatments, I would be exhausted and then started watching Fixing the Money thing. I was looking on Christian TV and started listening and I'm like, this is, this is what we've been looking for. I literally had stopped dreaming. I had dreams in my heart that I'd just given up because, well, when you're just on the hamster wheel and you're working as hard as you can and nothing's really changing, how are you gonna dream for anything more? And that's exactly where we were. I hated debt. And so I would have just loved to find a way to fix this money thing. Just a title caught my attention. And then when I heard he was in New Albany and, you know, it's like, there's a possibility here. This is our 27th year in business as an excavating business. And 
our business is always seasonal. It slows down in the wintertime. And we always struggled with even making payroll and things like that during January, February, March, when winter was at its worst. And so when we started listening to Pastor Gary and the things that he would say, we just felt like, man, this is, this is something that we really have to get connected to. Like Gary says, you gotta be a spiritual scientist and, and dig for yourself and find why or whatever. And I remember I, I read the scriptures and would take the scriptures that he would teach with and I would, I would look them up and see if he was right. And all made sense to me. One of the biggest things we've learned is the authority that God has given us in the earth realm. That's what we were lacking was the knowledge of the authority that we actually have in the earth realm. When I went back for a checkup after I had gone through all my chemo and was kind of over that and went back for a checkup, the doctor looked at me, shook his head, and he said, I am amazed. There is absolutely no evidence of any disease in your body. We came to the provision conference uh, that first time in 2016, and from there it just grew from there. We were actually part of another church and were very involved there. And after coming to provision and just learning more and then occasionally coming Saturday nights, we finally looked at each other and we're like, we have to go there and learn from these people. We were so hungry and wanted so much to learn more about these principles because if it's the kingdom, why we want it. And we knew about the kingdom, but we didn't understand the kingdom. I think it was in 18 when we went to Pastor Gary's Financial Revolution Conference in Atlanta. And while we were on the way down, one of our guys had an accident with one of the trucks. So we there had the opportunity to sow a seed. And we sowed a seed. And this was in the middle of winter. This was in January. We went on to Florida for vacation then. And before we came home, we had the cash to buy a very good used truck just like what we needed for the business. And that was our first big experience, experience with, with sowing a seed and seeing a harvest very quickly, even in the middle of winter. And that was very, very unusual for our business and for us to experience. We've always been tithers. We've always tithed, but we didn't understand what it means to sow a seed and expect a harvest. And we grew up as farmer's kids, and we didn't understand that, but. It's been a family business with one or two other people coming in to help us. So we're just a small family business. But as we have learned these kingdom principles, our, we've just seen our profit margins go way up and just uh, blessed with good jobs that are profitable. In, in the year 2018, we were so blessed. We paid cash for more things and we paid off more debt in that one year than we even dreamed of paying off in three years time. And 2018 was absolutely the most phenomenal year we've ever experienced ever. Part of our dream is to do whatever we can to help this message get out, if that's supporting the ministry or whatever it looks like. Sowing seeds into fertile ground to us is very, very important. I mean, I can throw my seed anywhere, and if it's not fertile, it's not gonna give me a harvest, and I feel like there's fruit here. It's not just Pastor Gary and Drenda talking about how to do things. There's fruit, look at their family. To me, that's real fruit. So why wouldn't I wanna be a part of that? That's how I think about partnership. Mm -hmm. Make sure it's fertile soil. And being raised on a farm, I definitely understand that. And that's where the seed produces a hundredfold. And Pastor Gary often talks about, um, as partners, you have the same reward. There's a mantle on them. And there's an anointing on them. And if we're partners and we get the same reward, why wouldn't I want that? Wouldn't you prefer prospering versus being in poverty? And that's, I think that's God's heart. 
I thank God for fixing the money thing because that's, that was hope for us. Wasn't that an amazing story? We delight, as God does, in seeing transformation in people's lives. When people can dream again and they have vision the way God created them to have vision. He created vision for you as well. That's amazing. I mean, they were like everyone is. They're not seeing the kingdom function. They're just surviving, but they're believers. And then discover that the kingdom operates by laws, began to the same thing, study the laws and found out laws work every time. Yeah, just like a farmer, as they said. Yeah, they grew up farming and they understood sowing and reaping and how that process worked. And then, you know, I, I, I think Christians have been taught to sow for years, but they've not been taught how to harvest. They've not been taught how the process plays out, the whole process. And so understanding the laws of the kingdom take you down the whole pathway of understanding this happens here, and this happens here, and this is why it happens. Yes. This is how you tap into it. This is how you release it. This is how you receive it. Mm -hmm. Crucial, crucial knowledge you have to have yes. to understand. A farmer has knowledge, not just sowing. He knows the whole process. Yes, and just like you got confidence in hunting yeah. and, and using God's kingdom principles, they got confidence in their business. And now I see, uh, we just had yeah. a women's meeting and Ruth was praying uh, for new believers and praying for people and laying on hands. It's so beautiful when people get a whole picture of the kingdom. And so it's not just about your finances. It's not just about your success. It's in every area. Absolutely. And now what I see is that confidence just carries into well, another area, another area. You can't. It's beautiful. You know, people go to a restaurant, have a great meal, they want to tell people. Mm -hmm. When you discover the kingdom, we could not stop from telling people. Our life was totally transformed, and we had to tell people this is the greatest thing that ever happened, you know? So we were excited about it. But we want to pray with you right now. And so uh, the first thing I want to encourage you to do is to put your faith towards God. What His Word says, understand the kingdom. I, I challenge you to become a spiritual scientist. Read the Bible differently and ask questions. Why did that happen? God has given you the keys of the kingdom. That's what Matthew 18 says. You have that authority. But we're going to agree right now. First thing I want to do is pray. We want to stop fear from yakking at you. And so in the name of Jesus, I bind fear from holding you back, holding you hostage, lying to you about who you are, lying to you about your future. I pray that you receive greater revelation of who you are and the kingdom of God, where you'll find freedom to dream again, freedom to step out in faith, and to enjoy what legally is already yours. Yes, we thank you, Lord. Mm -hmm. And we just thank you, Lord, that everything that pertains yes. to life and godliness has been given to mm -hmm. us through your kingdom, Father. We just thank you for shedding that knowledge abroad in our hearts, that love of God, but also the principles that you've given us to live by, Father, because we do believe and agree with your word that we have all yes. things that pertain to life, that pertain to godliness, yes. and we walk in abundance, we walk in freedom, we walk in blessing, and the world takes note of your kids, your kingdom, and they come into the light. They come into the light of the yes. kingdom of God. We just thank you for doing that in every person's life as they're connecting with our faith. Uh, we're connecting as partners in the kingdom. We thank you, Father. Your word is going out and it's transforming lives. And this gospel of the kingdom will be preached to the ends of the earth. And we praise you for that in Jesus' yes, name. Yes. Amen. And we want to encourage you to become a partner. Help us take the message to the world and we get to partner with you to see this grace of God transform everything, right? Everything. We'll be right back in just a minute and we'll tell you some more things happening this week.